Uh, well, this is super exciting uh, to have Senator Ben Allen with us. Uh, I'm really happy to introduce him as our closing speaker. Senator Allen uh, is a true champion for climate change and our environment. Uh, he represents a district in Los Angeles. I know many of you are not from Los Angeles, but he represents a district that is, uh, represents the world famous like Southern California beaches, right? From Santa Monica to Hermosa Beach, Manhattan, to like iconic neighborhoods like West Hollywood and Hollywood, to these very precious open lands um, in the Santa Monica Mountains which contains some of the most biodiverse Mediterranean ecosystems found anywhere on the planet. Um, so this means that he's dealing with the climate threats of sea level rise and wildfires and extreme heat and droughts in a very real way, day after day after day. Um, he has an incredible background, even prior to getting elected to the state Senate. Ben was already a strong advocate um, as an attorney, as a law professor, as a school board member, just really fighting uh, for the issues that are most pressing, not just to the state of California, but really across our country and across the world. Uh, he is a legislator that understands what we have been talking about today, the need to connect science and research to public policy and community. And I believe he really exemplifies um, the type of leadership that's gonna move California forward, maintain our leadership in climate, and, um, and really uh, maintain our country as leaders in, in, in climate uh, solutions. So I'm really happy and excited to be able to introduce him. They had a long day today um, in the state legislature. Um, I think as most people know, the state legislature in California is full time and they're working really hard because of all the impacts of COVID. So Senator, thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy um, that you're here and thank you for being such a great champion. I mean, we have loved working with you on a whole range of uh, policies, uh, but especially like the environmental education work that you've done because you understand the need to make sure that, that our youth uh, are literate in climate and environmental literacy. And we just thank you for everything that you've done and so with that, I'd like to introduce you um, to an incredible group of people that have been with us. Um, the people you'll be talking to today are many from Los Angeles, from California, um, but we also have people that are here from different parts of, of, the, of the country. So, so thank you for being here with us and welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. And um, you yourself are, have been such a great friend and partner and leader, uh, both for our broader community and also for our environment. And, and so that was a very, very kind introduction, but I appreciate you a great deal and appreciate all the work we've been able to do together with three people. Um, I, I do apologize, everybody. I was supposed to be on at nine in the morning and, and I was gonna be down in Los Angeles. Uh, our, our legislative session with our budget deal having uh, been completed and then all of our house of origin deadline bills uh, it created a situation where we found ourselves in session, uh, Senate session all day today, basically. I just got out and I'm about to head back down to Los Angeles, uh, but I'm still here in, 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 in stiflingly hot Sacramento, 100 degrees out right now. So I, I get to live um, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a warming Los Angeles might look like in 2050 every single day when I'm up here in Sacramento. I'll tell you, we got to do everything we can to, to keep LA cool uh, in more ways than one. So, um, but I will say today was, I, I, gotta, I gotta say with, with some deal of pride, we've got a lot of, of, of soil enthusiasts here and, and, and environmental enthusiasts in general. Um, with, with a great deal of pride, I think you, you will all appreciate the fact that um, instead of speaking to you, we were getting a, a really important bill across the finish line, in, well, le across the Senate finish line. Now we have to go over to the other house. But this was a bill to uh, effectively ban PFAS in our firefighting foam and firefighting equipment. PFAS, which is a uh, poly and perfluoroalkyl uh, substances, which have been um, an enormously uh, uh, problematic and potent uh, water contaminant and also carcinogen. Uh, if you don't know about this, you know, check out the film Dark Waters or check out the documentary on Netflix called The Devil We Know. Uh, but, but I'm sure everybody on this call has at least some, some familiarity and we're, uh, we're looking to, um, to, to, to ban this chemical in firefighting foam and equipment. It's something that's been a long time coming. We finally have brought the firefighters on board. And as a result, we were able to pull together a pretty strong, a pretty extraordinarily strong bipartisan vote in favor of the bill. 
Uh, and so we're, we're really hopeful as this moves forward that this will be something that will uh, you know, really make a difference in, 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 in stemming the amount of this dangerous chemical that ends up in our soils, ends up in our groundwater, and ends up polluting and contaminating human beings as well as our broader ecosystem. Um, you know, this is actually somewhere, California does pride itself, Cindy's right, we do pride ourselves on being major leaders globally uh, on, on, a, on a wide variety of environmental issues and, uh, and, 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 and climate issues. Um, of course, you know, on this issue, we we're actually behind four or five other states and we're behind some of our partners in the UK and Australia and, and elsewhere where they've been able to make the transition to more environmentally friendly firefighting uh, chemicals. Uh, and, and, you know, we've been working hard to try to you know, improve and really put some teeth into our green chemistry program and have run into some roadblocks. So California certainly um, uh, is a leader and we're really proud of our leadership, but, but we still have a long way to go in a lot of different, a lot of different areas. Uh, uh, but, you know, we are proud of the role that we've played in helping to advance the global conversation on, on combating climate change. Uh, you know, our clap and trade system, our, our, our AB and SB 32. Uh, and of course, we all tip our hats to the extraordinary Fran Pavley, whose whose seat I'm sort of sitting in. Um, uh, you know, the district that I represent, at least por a portion of the area that she used to represent, and her legacy continues to live on uh, in, in the California State Legislature. But it, it does continue to be a, a challenge, and, and we really are. Um, we continue to face difficult political hurdles in trying to do the right thing, even in a state as ostensibly progressive as California. Uh, you know, we, um, uh, I will say, it's my strong hope that if you look at what, what has happened with COVID, um, and I've got another big bill relating to try to reduce plastics waste. Uh, it's, a, it's a waste reduction bill that would be, it really would set California as a global leader in the, in the, in the battle against plastics pollution. Um, and, you know, what's interesting on, 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 on PFAS, on the fight against plastic pollution, on the broader fight against climate change, if you actually think about it, you think about what we were willing to do as a society, uh, the sacrifices we were willing to make to come together and, uh, and, and, and combat the, the threat of COVID-19 with everyone staying in their homes. Um, you know, the kinds of things that we're asking people, that we need people to do to combat climate change or to combat um, so many of our great environmental challenges actually don't involve anything close to the kind of personal sacrifice that we ask people to endure in the fight against COVID. And if you think about it, the climate change and, and some of these other environmental challenges are much more existential threats to humanity than COVID uh, is. And, um, and, and really what all we're asking people to do is to move over to more environmentally friendly, more environmentally sustainable uh, alternatives. And so uh, whether that be you know, finding cleaner ways for people to get around uh, to using more environmentally friendly products and packaging and chemicals and, and um, you know, investing in, in cleanup. Uh, you know, this is really all we're asking people to do. And, 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 and relatively minor lifestyle changes could actually make a huge difference in the environmental footprint that we all have. And yet, you know, we've still found it difficult. Uh, and it largely ends up being because of the industries that have grown up around the, uh, the, the technologies and products that we're using now. And they just are gonna fight exist you know, because they see this as an existential battle to their bottom line. And um, it's part of the political challenge that we all face, those of us who are environmentally oriented in the legislature and in the advocacy world. So uh, this continues to be an area of real passion for me. I'm, I'm the chair of our Senate Environmental Quality Committee. I also chair uh, our Senate Environmental Caucus which is a, a group of environmentally, sorry, it's a legislative environmental caucus. It's a group of environmentally uh, oriented legislators in the California State Legislature. I'm also a member of the Natural Resources and Water Committee. That was the committee that Fran Pavel used to chair. Uh, her former staffer, who's now my friend and colleague in the Senate, Henry Stern, uh, serves as chair of that committee now. And we've all worked really closely together to preserve and protect air and, and water quality and, and, and habitat, biodiversity, combating climate change. You know, we've also been working a lot on, on, the, on, on the, the next step of thinking about and, and trying to ensure that we can adapt to the impending rising temperatures. And we're working on a big climate resiliency bond right now, and, and that would help to fund some of the healthy soils programs that I know the people uh, on, this, on this call care a great deal about. Um, you know, in the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, California is not only a leader, but it really is facing some of the worst impacts. Um, you know, California's 
when, when, it, when it comes to climate change. I mean, we're, we are having record setting heat waves, uh, prolonged periods of drought followed by extreme rain and snow and flooding events, not to mention worsening and lengthening fire seasons every, uh, every year. We're also uh, seeing very dangerous sea level rise that really threatens so many of our coastal communities. And if you look at the economic impact of sea level rise on a city like San Francisco and the Great Embarcadero area, for example, I mean, it is enormous. Uh, the, the kinds of the kind of costs that they're looking at there. Um, so there's a lot of challenges that we have. We have, uh, you know, both a moral and an economic and a societal imperative to find creative solutions to help address this global crisis. And, and you know, I think one of the things that we have been trying to push for and, and that so many people on this call have been working on is, is, is trying to find more nature-based solutions to help our communities better mitigate and adapt to the new normal uh, with relation to these environmental challenges, climate change, et cetera. And, and it's become abundantly clear, at least to those of us who are environmental policy nerds, that soil is a part of the solution. I think most of my colleagues still don't quite understand this, but you know, soil is so essential to human life. It's not only vital for providing uh, most of the world's food, but it plays a critical role in helping to ensure our water supply, our water quality, supports a, a vast array of, of non-food products and benefits, it sequesters carbon, it affects biodiversity. It's, it's so important for ecological resilience. Uh, you know, just as an example, I know that globally sto soils store about three times more carbon than vegetation and twice the carbon present in the atmosphere. I don't, I don't think your average American uh, really understands that. And, 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 you know, in the end of the day, soil, it, it's dirt, right? It's, it's, it's underrated. I mean, I think, you know, the benefits of soil are often only recognized after those benefits have been degraded or eroded or after extreme events such as landslides or, or land subsidence uh, have occurred. So, you know, it's, it's one of, this is why I, I wanted to participate in this. And I do apologize for being at the end rather than the beginning. I guess I'm your closing speaker rather than your opening speaker. But it, it really does, um, uh, it excites me a great deal that we've got such a smart group of people who have been getting together to talk about healthy soils. And, and I want to salute the leadership of tree people in this area. You guys have been just such, such leaders in helping to advance both the, 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 the thought community in this area, but also the policy and the advocacy. Uh, and, and it's a great marriage because it's so vitally important. We can have people, you know, having wonderful conversations on calls, but if we don't find ways to inject the things that we're talking about in a call like this, into policy solutions, uh, we're not going to have the kind of impact that we know we need to have. Uh, and, and by the way, I, um, you know, we've, we've, we, while I personally missed the, 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 you know, the, the session today with you guys, we've, we've recorded it and we're going to be reviewing it. I know Tina Andalina on my staff, who's also just an incredible environmental policymaker in her, in her own right, is on the call. And, and uh, she and I will be reviewing um, you know, some of the best practices that have been discussed. And maybe, maybe there's some opportunities for a bill or or some other policy solutions that, that, that came up this morning that we ought to try to figure out a way to incorporate into our work in the Capitol. So, um, you know, this, so I, I you know, it's our, it's our, it's our hope that, that we'll be able to, as we, as we, as we try to, to think about the, the, the path forward out of the, out of this recession, uh, it's become abundantly clear that just like, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, did with, with, uh, you know, with the great recession, great depression, taking, that moment, understanding the infrastructural needs of the country and the long-term needs of the country, whether it be our transportation system or our, our, our park system, the Civilian Conservation Corps, uh, you know, uh, the social security programs, all those kinds of things that he, he foresaw a need for. Uh, you know, it's, it's my strong hope that we will understand, we'll, we'll use the, the need for job creation now to create the sorts of environmentally friendly infrastructure that we know we need uh, in the future. You know, I, I went to a high school, Santa Monica High School in LA, and some of you may be familiar with the beautiful Barnum Hall. It was a Works Progress Administration theater that was built by, uh, you know, by, by this jobs creation program in the 1930s uh, when they just needed to put people to work. But instead of like, you know, having them do random stuff that wasn't gonna have a long-term impact or, or, or worse, things that would have a detrimental impact, they actually had them building infrastructure that would benefit generations to come. I got to benefit from the beautiful Art Deco uh, theater that they built back in the 30s. Now, how exciting would it be if we could you know, think about this moment and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren would be thanking us today for seizing this, economic, this moment of economic challenge to, to, 
to, to put in place the sort of green infrastructure and in your case, brown infrastructure uh, with regards to soils, building climate resilience, building healthy communities, you know, putting in place the kinds of infrastructure that are gonna really make an impact for, for many generations to come as they struggle with, 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 with trying to grow and thrive living in a world that has been so contaminated by our generation and generations past. So that's our challenge. I really look forward to hearing about uh, all the progress that you made today. And, 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 and I'm also really looking, most importantly for me at least, I'm looking forward to looking for ways that we can partner together to advance the policy objectives that you've discussed today. You know, re-inject science into the political process in a positive way, uh, in a way that will be productive and, and helpful to future generations. So thank you, Rich. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, everyone who participated. And, 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 and thank you so much for all you're doing to help make our environment better. Thank you, Ben. That was wonderful. Um, it's always great to have support from the policy arena um, and uh, really appreciate those great kind remarks and, uh, and also appreciate the, your appreciation for soils and brown infrastructure. I loved it that you used the term. That's great. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. All right, um, I'm going to get down to LA, but I, I appreciate you guys very much. Let's work together. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm still ticked off at you guys taking the Dodgers and the Giants, but, you know, I'm a New Yorker. Oh, I know. I see you're in New York. Yeah, well, you know, it's <laughs> spreading the love, man. It's spreading the love. Okay. <laughs> um, I was wondering, is Cindy still on? Yes, I, I am Hi, still Cindy. on. Uh, Senator, that was amazing. Uh, I mean, I just want to say, Senator, that was amazing. That was inspiring. I mean, truly, you make me proud to be a Californian. Uh, I love how you always push us. Uh, that we could do more because it's so true we could do more um, and we will continue to support you in the efforts that you have going on thank you um, for taking such a huge interest in in soils um, and understanding how that is a critical piece of our climate solutions so thank you again for everything and to tina on your team who is also dynamic and smart and fantastic we're going to keep working with tina um, and, and, and really support, I think, what will be a few, um, a really a few good years of us beginning to lay the groundwork for um, transformative policy changes around soils. Um, and to all of our speakers today, uh, thank you um, for teaching us so much um, and for helping us launch research that, um, that will transform communities, local communities throughout our country. Um, and we just really appreciate everything that you've taught us. Um, we look forward to working with you again uh, to Andy and our funders um, for having the vision and, um, and giving us the partnership and, and the resources to help make this happen.